Welcome to an overly busy, self-made, high-functioning, anxious traveler's vlog. Today, I will be taking you to Choi Hung Estate, Mong Kok, and some film locations of the movie Chunking Express. But first, this is a quick peek at what I look like before embarking on yet another soul-transforming day. My last full day in Hong Kong is filled with getting lost in the cinematic vibe of the city and getting lost multiple times in the city. It all started with a walk from my hotel to the exhibition center MTR station. It should have been a short 10 minute stroll, but after losing mobile data connection and the feeling on my fingertips due to the cold, cold weather, I found myself here. Little did I know that I had actually passed the building that I was looking for. I even turned to look again, but continued walking in the wrong direction. I tried asking this very kind local. There were almost no one in the area, so it was more difficult to ask people. <laughs> So I got lost earlier looking for the exhibition center station. I just asked for some directions and then when I looked up, I got here at the Victoria Harbor. <laughs> Woo! I remember yesterday when I was in the Victoria Peak, I was somewhere on that hill. I was overlooking this area with that ferry's wheel and the lights of these buildings and now I'm here at where I was looking at from the Victoria Peak. Despite the detour adding 20 minutes to my route, I didn't mind at all. As a solo traveler, getting lost sometimes is part of the charm, making every step, turn and decision on my own. I don't have to worry if someone is waiting for me or if they like places I'm going to. Like I'm in my own little world. You hear no one's thoughts but your own, no one's comments or complaints. It's liberating to smile at the world without wondering if I look picture perfect. Now, we're back to looking for the exhibition center. At the Exhibition Center station, I was greeted by lively classical music similar to what I heard at Disneyland MTR station. From the Exhibition Center station, I had to transfer to the Kwantung Line in order for me to get from the Hong Kong Island to the Kowloon region. Choi Hong feels more sunny and less crowded than Kuari Bay or Wan Chai. Excuse me, where is Chong Hong Estate? Where is Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. To find the famous Choi Hong Estate basketball court, I asked a friendly local for directions. It's amazing how we could still understand each other despite speaking different languages. Most of the locals in Hong Kong I interacted with are kind and helpful. If you understand what he's saying here, I'd love to know in the comments. <laughs> okay. Upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. I was amazed with Choi Hong Estate's facade. Except for this young boy who woke up and chose violence. It's funny how he brought that balloon toy all the way up here just to repeatedly hit and kick it. Anyways, Choi Hong Estate, known as the Rainbow Estate in Cantonese, was built in the 1960s. Its name comes from the colorful buildings that resemble a beautiful rainbow. This iconic public housing estate features multiple high-rise blocks with a total of 9 colors representing the rainbow's spectrum. The estate's vibrant basketball court has become one of the most popular Instagram spots in Hong Kong. 
but beyond its picturesque appearance, Choi Hung Estate reflects Hong Kong's history and its urban development over the decades. It stands as a testament to the city's resilience and adaptability. After enjoying the sunny vibe at the Choi Hung Estate, I took the MTR again to explore Mong Kok. At this point, I didn't have any exact itinerary. I just wanted to walk around and see what the area has to offer. I have been seeing this kind of drink and waffle snack around Hong Kong for a while now, so I decided to finally try them. They call it Hong Kong style egg bubble waffle. The egg bubble waffle and the coconut water cost 20 Hong Kong dollars each. I have no exact place to go, so I just walked around to find a good spot to stop and eat. Para siyang nasang gata, ganun. Hindi siya kalasa yung bubugo sa Pilipinas na as in, yung talagang sabaw ng bubo. Mm. Ah, parang pancake. Mm. Makain ako sa atabi ng kalsada kasi nakikita ko maraming gumagawa na ito. Hindi ko kasi labi ng mama dahil yung mga tao. Ah, parang akong pancake na maluto. Pancake na maluto na laba. While the coconut water wasn't quite to my taste, the perfectly cooked egg waffle won me over. I continued walking around to look for some interesting spots in Mong Kok, but the streets all looked the same for me, so I felt like I was going in circles. <laughs> but it's okay, since I love the feeling of just wandering in a place I have never been to. Market ngayon. So, I'm going to go market. I'm going to go to market. I'm going to go to the 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 market. I'm So I'm here at the Mokko Mall and I walked from Decathlon to here, which is crazy, by the way. So I'm looking for the um, Tea Galleria Beauty, something like that, to buy some fragrances from my parents. Is your name Andy? Yeah, I'm Andy. My name's Andy too. Your girl. Yes. Oh. My name's Andrea. But Andrea. Yes, oh, okay. but people you call me my Andy. Name card? Oh Andy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you are Andrea. 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 Beautiful name. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm born in Hong Kong. Where do you live in Hong Kong? Chin Wan. Chin Wan. Yeah. My hotel's in Wan Thai. Wan Thai. Yes. Hong Kong Thai. Yes. So you, you take a subway? Yes. Come here, right? Yes, yes. I arrived at the Temple Street Night Market, and as the name suggests, it's much better if you go at night. I didn't realize I went to Mong Kok at the wrong time of the day. But it's fine, since I realized that I was super close to one of the film locations, filmed by one of my most favorite Asian directors, Wong Kar Wai. And this part is for my fellow cinephiles out there. As a traveler and a person passionate about film, it feels great to actually stand in the most iconic film locations of the movie, Chunking Express. But don't worry, if you haven't seen it, there are no spoilers here. Among the bustling metropolis stands a building that has witnessed tales of love and loneliness, the Chunking Mansions. Did you know that the Chunking Mansions is a real building located in Jim Sha Chui, Hong Kong? 
Time magazine once described Chunking Mansions as Asia's best example of globalization in action. This labyrinthine building was home to a myriad of stories, a mix of food stalls, money changers, and independent shops run by vendors from around the globe. Up until now, its soul remains intact, a living testament to the conversion of cultures and dreams. Before its association with the movie Chunking Express, Chunking Mansions had a reputation for being a haven for crime, sex trade, and drug-related activities. Wong Kar Wai, the director of Chunking Express, was captivated by the chaotic and vibrant ambience of the building. He chose the location to represent the energy and complexity of urban life. Next, Graham Street Market, a hidden treasure nestled amidst the dynamic streets of Hong Kong. This iconic location played a significant role in the movie. Graham Street Market holds a rich history spanning over 160 years. As you walk through the narrow alleys and endless fruit stalls, you'll find yourself immersed in a vibrant microcosm, a true reflection of Hong Kong's diverse cultural tapestry. In Chunking Express, this lively market becomes the backdrop for unforgettable moments in the characters' lives, where the clash of East and West echoes their own inner conflicts. Director Wong Kar Wai's visionary direction captures the urban authenticity of Graham Street, immortalizing its timeless charm on the silver screen. Just as the characters' life intertwine here, the film leaves an indelible mark on this beloved location, etching its spirit in cinematic history. And the last Chunking Express film location I visited is the central to mid-level escalators, an engineering marvel that gracefully connects Hong Kong's bustling central district to the charming mid-levels. This extraordinary urban feature served as a pivotal backdrop in Chunking Express, but did you know that it's also the longest covered outdoor escalator system in the world? It was built in 1993, around the time of the Chunking Express filming, and it carries almost 80,000 people between central and mid-levels. Wong Kar Wai masterfully uses the escalators as a recurring motive in the film, creating a poetic narrative that blurs the line between reality and dreams. Chunking Express ingeniously weaves the lives of its characters into the fabric of these escalators, symbolizing the ups and downs of their emotional journeys, inviting us to ponder the intricacies of fate. As the sun sets on my final day in Hong Kong, I've gathered fleeting moments and reflections of this cherished journey. Here's a short clip, a heartfelt memoir, and an ode to Wong Kar Wai's timeless masterpiece. Again, thank you for being here with me.